Hey, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> I was, there was one point when I was talking with someone, I was like, yeah, I think I'm speaking at like 10, 30, 11, and they were like, no, I was like, it's cool. All right. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming to my talk about our favorite thing, humans. The worst, right? Um, my name is Ariel, and I am a translator. Uh, my degree is in cognitive science and linguistics, and uh, I started my career in defense policy analysis, where I learned to speak Army and Marine Corps and a little bit of Navy. Um, and uh, got into emerging tech, cybersecurity. Um, I've come and hang out with all you guys. And just the other night, I was at an event in the intelligence community. Um, I work with four-star generals and CEOs. And I can somehow talk to all of them. Um, there's a big gap in the infosec world between techies and normals, or as I know we've all heard them called muggles because that's not full of disdain or anything, right? So the thing about security is that security, especially cybersecurity, information security, isn't going to work until it works for everyone. And you can call humans the weak link in the chain, or you can say that, hmm, man, the chain, it really doesn't work for humans, does it? So, you know, either or. This is how we see you. Accuracy notwithstanding, right? Perception is reality. Um, uh oh. Meme, come back. Okay. Perception is reality. Um, we, the InfoSec folks, techies, tend to hang out amongst yourselves in your dark windowless rooms, um, at conferences with each other. And the only time that we ever talk to you as normals is when there's a problem. Right? And something's broken or not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And that's not really a good way to start a relationship. So um, at one point, I was going to have a whiteboard, but I don't. So this is going to be the interactive part where I say, how many times have you heard, OK, but why can't I just? Right? Who's got, who has a good one? Just like shout. Don't make me do it alone, guys. Executives, sure. Who, who, what's your favorite why can't I just? Or why can't you just, right? Why can't I watch Netflix on the corporate network? Why can't I just watch Netflix on the corporate network? Anyone else? Why can't I install arbitrary software on my work computer? I don't even know what arbitrary software is. Why can't I just have this thing that I want, right? Why can't I download DLL Sure that. Right? No. I mean, why can't I just use Dropbox? Right? Right? Why can't I exact why can't I just use my own laptop? Right? The thing is is that this goes both ways, right? Why can't you just? Why can't you just leave me alone to do this thing? Right? I mean what so what are some of the why can't I just that you have said? Or the why can't you just that you as technologists have said to the, to the normals, to the muggles, where you're just like, why can't you just leave me alone so I can do my job? Use Tor, use Signal. Why can't you just use Tor? Why can't you just use Signal? What else? Why can't you just take my recommendations? Oh, why can't you just take my, why can't you just listen to me? <laughs> right? Why can't you just get it? Right? That's actually a great segue. Because the thing is, is that, we don't speak the same language. Um, I, you know, I've become polyglottal because this is what I do. I'm a journalist, and uh, right now I write for Washington Exec, for whom, by the way, I am not speaking. I'm here in my own capacity. But one of the things that I've had to learn is how to do something like explain a ROP attack in like 400 words at the executive level. Why can't you just listen to me? The thing is. It's not about you. Um, we, we are artists, right? You write code, I write words. At the end of the day, we all take immense pride in the work that we do in creating what it is that we create. The thing is that if you're going to live off your art, you have to be prepared to do it to someone else's standards. I got on a Twitter fight the other day. 
not a huge one, just a little one, with a guy who said something, something like, you know, oh, don't, don't ask me for a Picasso if you only have finger painters to maintain it. And I said, well, if it was easier to maintain, maybe finger painters would have been enough. And he said, well, no, no, you can't just ask me for a secure words, 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 right? And I was like, hmm, if I don't know what that is, as someone who spent some time in and around all y'all, my guess is your customer probably didn't ask you for that because they probably don't know what that is either. Especially if they only have finger painters, my guess is that what they really wanted was something that was, you know, at finger painter level. It sucks. We all like perfection and we know we have a good sense of what security means, right? But you can't give someone a solution they don't want or one they can't maintain or one they can't use. The best tool isn't going to matter if it requires going into the command code and typing some stuff, like see PGP. I have spent so much time trying to get PGP to work and like it just, just no. So I don't use it, right? So when you do it to someone else's standards, this means you have to listen, right? How to do that? How to human? Um, as frustrating as it is, feedback like, uh, why can't I just, is exactly that. It's user feedback. Um, why can't I just stay logged in, right? Um, the language that they use is a good indicator of the level of their own understanding of whatever it is they're talking about, right? Why can't I just use the same authentication app for two-factor for one email as I can for the other email, right? Okay, I know what two-factor is and I know what an authentication app is versus like, why can't I just, you know, print from my laptop, right? Two different levels of understanding. When you're communicating, you have to speak to people in their language and not yours if you want them to understand you. Second, um, as a reporter um, and in the policy world, uh, one of the first things you learn, especially after coming out of college when you write 20-page papers, is that no one reads 20-page papers bottom line up front, right? You have, you have like two sentences to get to the point. Um, this kind of goes back to the it's not about you thing as well. Um, I, don't, I don't need to know how something works to be able to use it. Another Twitter fight. Um, a guy uh, was bitching about how dumb uh, users are. And um, you know, I, was, I was saying, well, you know, he's like, you can't, you can't have a security tool if you don't know how it works. And I said, do I need to know how my car works to be able to drive it? No, not, not really. In fact, all I need to know is the base level of maintenance, right? And then when I need to take it to the professionals. That's all I need to know. So when you're interacting with your customers or your project managers or your muggles slash normals, right? Think about what it is that they care about. Similarly, while InfoSec might be like your lives or our lives 24 seven, like your CEO has a lot of other things to worry about. Um, this is another one of the things that I think InfoSec folks get really frustrated with and I've seen it. Again, another Twitter fight like two days ago. I'm on Twitter a lot, I'm in media. But um, this guy said, you know, in reference to a breach, oh, it's the same mistake that companies always make because I don't want to pay for it. And I said, well, Sometimes there are other factors at play. If you're a small business and the choice is spend X dollars on marketing so that you can, you know, sustain your business or X dollars on beefing up your security, it's not much of a choice, is it? Right? So just because people have different priorities doesn't mean they're wrong. And for the love of God, don't treat us like we're stupid. Again, just because we have different priorities doesn't mean that we don't understand or that we don't care. And you know what happens when you're an asshole? Nobody wants to listen to you. And that socio-technical divide gets worse, and we get further and further from each other, and bad feelings all around. So humans, we're different from you, right? Humans are not logical. Um, they are not binary. Or as I recently learned, humans are not closed systems, right? The thing is, 
they're still fairly predictable. In fact, there are centuries of science looking at how humans make decisions, human behavior, psychology, cognitive science, economics, right? It's not like we're completely unknown variables. So bring that into how you think about your solutions. Um, I was talking on Rally Security earlier this week, and for more of the science behind this, please go check out that talk, because I had an hour then, and I have like not much time now. Um, but all of this can be brought into how we design security tools. Um, and Danny, who I was speaking to, was like, man, this is a lot like what I learned uh, in my social engineering training. And I said, yeah, everyone in security should be getting social engineering training, right? There's, there's a reason that nine times out of 10, the best way to get into a network is through social engineering. It's because a lot of the time we don't think about humans when we build these tools, right? So in group and out group, as animals, which humans are, one of the first things that we do is establish whether you are like me or not like me. This goes back to being an asshole, and this goes back to being not about you, right? Um, from the beginning, the first thing that someone is going to do is try to figure out, are you on my side? You guys are the outsiders. You're the people that stay in your rooms that don't have faces and wear ski masks. For just show of hands, who's actually ever worn a ski mask in a serious, con in a serious context? OK, there are like four which is actually more than I was expecting. Good to know. Um, so you guys are outsiders. You're unknowns. Um, you're anonymous. Not the, I mean, you might be, but <laughs> different. I mean it in the civilian sense, I guess. Right? You're unknown. And that's scary, right? People are afraid of what they don't know. So people are going to be suspicious and see you as outsiders from the beginning. But the thing is, is that once you're in, you're good to go. Right? Once you've built that base level of trust, you're on the inside. It's pretty hard to get kicked out from the inside. So at the end of the day, again, security isn't going to work until it works for everyone. Um, and I would like to leave you with my little secret of how I've learned to become polyglottal. And that is, I sit and I listen, or stand, and I listen, and I let you guys talk, or whomever it is, right? Four-star generals talk, executives talk, and then I go, okay, so what you're saying is blankety blankety blank. And then they get the chance to confirm or correct. Yeah. And I go, great, because that's all I needed to know, right? Or they say, well, it's, it's more like this, and, I've, and I'm good, right? Listen, listen to their language, translate for yourself, right? Don't assume that you know what they're talking about, because especially in the, with the knowledge gap between technical and non-technical folks, you, prob you probably don't, right? Um, so give folks a chance to confirm or correct. Um, and listen and learn from each other, because there's a lot that we can listen to and learn from each other. Um, please shout out to me on Twitter. I, I also want to hear from you, right? As, as technical folks, what are the most frustrating things that you see? Like, find me, talk to me. I'll be here all day. Um, but what, what are the communication breakdowns that you see? What is, what are the most annoying, why can't you just? Let me know. Um, and with that, thank you so much. And we've got a few minutes for questions. <laughs> questions, comments. Why can't I just? Shut up. Why can't I just anything? Yes. So in seeing these different groups of folks acting on these have you been switched to code in an event, say, one year or six months ago with a total cluster? Ah. Do you need to go back and see any improvement and say, oh, that security guy did a right word back? No, we're actually. Learn something? Yeah, so that actually is a, so the question was, have I gone to an event in the past and seen a total cluster and then gone again in the future and seen either muggles slash normals learn to speak tech or the other way around where techs learn to speak muggle? Um, and it reminds me of, uh, of a quick story that I, that I forgot to mention. Um, my, so my, I've only been in and around this world for 
a fairly short amount of time. Um, and I was more stressed out first coming to an InfoSec event than I was cold calling special operations forces. Not even kidding. Um, but I think I've, like, I've learned. So, you know, where I am now versus where I was six months or a year ago is a very different place. Um, and I've met a lot of folks, too, who have sort of more on an individual level um, been reaching out and um, been engaged with trying to bridge this gap. Um, so again, like the, the gents at Rally Security um, posted on Twitter, they were like, hey, we're talking about soft skills and writing reports. And I was like, huh. What, what should we talk about? And I was like, well, here are a few things. P.S. I'm speaking on Saturday about this because I care about it a lot. And they're like, come talk to us. Teach us the things. Right? So I've actually been really encouraged at um, what I've seen in terms of people trying to reach out and bridge the gap because that's the only way it's going to happen. Yes? So nobody's got time for a whole step later, Almost all of those communities have their hierarchy and have certain natural barriers to that. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot use them the right lexicon. Yes. If you get oh, yeah. Acronyms, right? right? Um, but, but it's every community, right, has their, has their set of mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's a great question. The question, you know, we don't we don't have time for twelve steps. Um, what are what are three things that we can do? Um, I one of the one of the things that I've been listening to. Uh, I do a lot of work around uh, women in tech and minorities in tech, um, and. One of the things that we hear a lot is um, two ears, one mouth, right? Listen twice as much as you talk. Um, the forest of Configo is what is the big barrier between folks in this community and other communities um, and normals. So whoever normals is, right? Whether you're in the military and normals are civilians, whether you're special operations and normals is the other guys, like the the forest of Configo, confusion and ego, is why, is like the main reason that these barriers exist, right? Um, so ex remember, it's not about you. Listen to the language that they're using and you mirror, right? So um, use, use the words that they use. If you don't understand those words, you can do one of two things. Um, and I say this as a, as a journalist, um, and I was a freelance writer, like secret, you guys, my life is based on pillars of BS, right? I, I, I have the best job where I get paid to talk to really smart people and then write about it. It's like getting my own PhD without having to go to school. Um, but it does mean that I'm the dumb one in the room, like most of the time. So listen, if, you, if there's something you don't know, either ask or write it down and look it up later. Um, and, and learn, right? Use their own, use their own language back. Treat people with respect and show that you're trying, right? I think that's, that's one of the biggest, you can't just like listen and have it wash over you. Show that you're trying and people will, people will pick up on that. Um, they can tell by your facial expression, by your body posture, whether you're open or whether you're closed. Um, all of this really, really matters. So I hope those are helpful. Yes. In your experience, what's the most effective way to convince an executive of the value of security? <laughs> what's the most effect effective way to convince an executive of the value of security? Um, unfortunately, it's the uh, you got to make the business case. Yep. 
it has to be about it has to be about the bottom line and you also have to have to recognize that they have other priorities right namely that bottom line but so when but not not just that but it's not just to be out. security doesn't happen in a vacuum right they have training costs right how much is your tool going to cost them just to train people to use is that going to be a barrier to entry um how frequently are they going to have to update stuff? Are they going to have to pay for an entirely new system? Blah, 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 right? If you can give them, you know, everyone talks about what's a pound, you know, what's a pound of security or what's a dollar of security worth? You know, and, and lots of us know that anyone that says like, oh, well, a cyber attack costs this much dollars. <laughs> like, oh, okay. We're working on that. Um, and if you guys have thoughts on this, if there's stuff that you would like, like, please tell me, find me. Um, if there is one thing that you want executives to know, tweet at me, find me after, because I talk to them. Um, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, it is about the bottom line, and, and also, other, other key tip, um, in terms of mirroring, wear what they wear, right? Don't go in to talk to a CEO dressed like I'm dressed right now. Don't go in to talk to a CEO in a t-shirt, put on a goddamn suit. Sorry. All right. Thanks, guys. Please find me later.